Hey Stitchers, I hope you're all okay. I know I've been very quiet on Floss Tube this month, but I thought I would attempt today to do my October whip update video, so that's what I'm going to try and do. I haven't actually done that much st stitching in the last two weeks. I think a few of you, the only type of stitching I've done, I did a little piece of hardanger, which I know a few of you have seen. But apart from that, I haven't actually picked up my stitching for two weeks. So I'm hoping uh, maybe to try and get a bit done and get started again this weekend. But um, for October, I stitched on two pieces. Um, you might remember at the end of my September Whip Update video, I had just started, I think I'd done an evening's worth of stitching, on the Victoria Sampler Fire Crimson Sampler, the band sampler. Um, as usual, I was fussing about nothing because in a few evenings of stitching, I'd actually finished it. So this is this one, all finished. I've just pinned some red fabric to the back of it so that you can um, see the cut work a bit easier. But um, that's it, all finished, all done. I really enjoyed stitching this piece and I'll definitely be stitching up the other three in the series next year. And actually stitching on this piece made me realise something about one of my whips, which I've come to a decision on which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. So that's that one all done. Um, it combines all the things I love about counted thread work. So it's got you know the hardanger band, it's got the two um, herringbone, double herringbone hem stitch bands, and then it's got the pulled stitch bands. Um, that band there above the hearts is pulled honeycomb stitch, and then you've got a pulled satin stitch um, there, just above the bargello or bargello, however you say, I don't know how you say it, um, band. So, and of course you've got the beads and the metallics. It used, used all different types of thread, so it used DMC stranded thread, uh, cotton thread, it used pearl thread in number 5, number 8 and number 12 DMC, but it also used two types of Krennic, number 4 and number 8 braid, and what else did it use? It also used um, watercolours and water lilies thread, Karen watercolours and water lilies thread, so it was a really great fun piece to stitch didn't take very long to stitch up at all and I'm just really glad I decided to get over it and stitch it because as it turned out it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought it would be. Um, one thing I will say about Victoria Sampler pieces, um, if you've never attempted hardanger before I wouldn't necessarily make a Victoria Sampler piece your first go at it, not because um, the hard angle itself is difficult, it's not. You can totally do it if it's in a Victoria Sampler pattern. The reason I say that is because in the case of the Victoria Sampler pieces I have in my stash, so I can only speak from those, they do assume a certain level of knowledge. So for example, with this piece, for this band here, this hard angle band, all the instructions said was um, withdraw, cut and withdraw the threads as necessary. Um, then sew woven bars and add in your dove's eyes. That was it. There's no stitch diagrams for how to stitch a dove's eye, there's no stitch diagrams of how to weave your bars, so it assumes that you already know that. Now of course Google will get you so far, but to be honest there aren't that many good um, on the internet um, descriptions and instructions for how to stitch hard anger stitches. I mean there might be a few YouTube videos, I don't know, I don't really look at that stuff. Um, so what, I mean, I already knew how to stitch that um, when I got to it because I'd done other hardanger charts before this one. Um, I know I've said it before, but I started off with Mabel Figura, these hardanger. And to be honest, those charts are worth, those chart packs are worth their weight in gold. If the only reason that they also act as a really good um, stitching reference because all her charts contain diagrams for all the stitches, teaches you how to obviously do basic cloister blocks, how to wrap bars, how to weave bars, how to do all the different filling stitches, those are little stitches that go in the little windows, like these dove's eyes, all of those. So even once you've done the chart, you've stitched the chart, all those stitch diagrams act as a really good stitch reference. And in fact, when it came to doing this piece, I just had to go back and remind myself how to stitch dove's eyes where, um, when they're surrounded by wrapped bars. I know that will probably 
sound like complete gobbledygook to those of you out there that don't know anything about Hardanger. Maybe one day I'll do a video on Hardanger, I don't know. But I just thought I'd mention that. It's not that the Victoria sampler pieces are difficult, you can absolutely totally stitch them. It's just that if it's your first time doing Hardanger, there probably won't be the sort of step-by-step -step instructions that you need when you make it your first attempt. So I just thought I'd mention that. Obviously, it's entirely up to you what you decide to do. Um, but I just didn't want anybody to have one of those sort of charts in their stash, have a look at it and think, oh no, I can't do this, it's totally beyond me, because Hardanger isn't, anybody can stitch Hardanger. If you can stitch a straight line, you can stitch Hardanger. So that's that one. So that was sort of the first week of October. Um, as I say, it only took a few evenings worth of stitching to stitch and finish that one up. I always find band samplers go quite quickly, because you're doing sort of little rows of different things, so it kind of moves it along a bit. So next up in my, well I don't really have a rotation anymore, next up in my pile of things to do um, was Minnie watching it fly. Now I hadn't stitched on her since July, so I picked her up in October, second week of October. So this is what she looked like at the beginning of October before I stitched on her. And this is what she looks like now. As you can see, she is all finished. All done. So I'm really, really happy with her. She was a complete joy to stitch, really easy, you know, no confetti stitching whatsoever. And for Minnie, I'm just, again, really, really pleased with how her face came out, because obviously that's the most detailed part of the chart. And to be honest, I wouldn't... I wouldn't necessarily think of this as a mini. A lot of stitches make the mistake of thinking that minis lose detail. I think that's possibly true for some Heaven and Earth designs, but it definitely wasn't true for this one. And I just love stitching her. You can't actually, oh, you can see a bit, there's actually detail on her dress, like buttons and um, detailing, but you can't really see it very well. The light's not very good in here, but obviously a lot of you have probably already seen this finish on um, Instagram. I posted it when she was finished. So yep, yeah, that's her all done. So I'm really pleased about her. I'm really pleased with her. So hopefully I can submit her to the reward programme and then get a free chart. So that was good. Um, so now I will just mention, as on the subject of heaven and earth designs, after I stitched um, the Victoria Sampler piece, I kind of thought to myself, it made me realise that that's the type of stitching I enjoy doing. That is what gets me, you know, excited about stitching and I want to do more of that type of stitching. So any of you that are keeping notes realise that I have another Heaven and Earth design as a work in progress, daffodils, Heaven and Earth design daffodils. Um, I have decided, after some thought all month, that I think I'm going to let that one go. I'm not going to pick it up again. I think I'm just going to put all the DMCs back into stock, I salvage the fabric and use it for something else. And the reason I've come to that decision is not because I don't love the artwork. I do. I absolutely love the artwork. I love art. I'm a type of person that can look at art books for hours. Never mind if you put me in front of, you know, an actual real life painting. I just love art. But and it isn't also, it's not to do with the fact that I'm stitching on material I'm not happy with. I am completely happy, you know. I know what I like when it comes to heaven and earth designs. But when I initially kitted that one up, it actually sat in my stash, kitted, for a year before I chose to start it. And it's because I knew that the sticking point for me with that design is the, just the size of it. I knew that it would take me years to stitch. Um... So I wanted to be sure that I could hack stitching something for that long. And now I've come to the conclusion that I, I was going to say I don't want to waste my time on it. It's not what I mean. It's not a waste of time. But I just can't. The fact that I know that I'll be stitching on it for six, seven years. I mean, I barely made any progress on it from the time that I've started, which isn't like me at all. There's basically only about a month's worth of work that I've done on it. So 
you know, if I'm hesitating about it now, now's the time to sort of stop, not when I'm halfway through and think, oh, I can't hack this anymore. And I also read a really good article on Mary Corbett's blog this week about unfinished um, embroidery or stitching projects. So I'll put a link to that below. And I read through that and it kind of helped me to see that, you know, it's okay to say, actually, I've moved on. This, is, this isn't what I want to do anymore. And I mean, in the last three and a half years, I have finished, stitched and finished seven Heaven and Earth designs. So I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to Heaven and Earth designs. I knew how long the daffodils would take me to stitch. I know on average how long it takes me to stitch a Heaven and Earth designs page and, and that type of thing. But just for fun, I added up, as I say, I've had seven Heaven and Earth designs finishes. And the total stitch count for those seven pieces is two... 255,214 stitches. So over three and a half years, that's how many Heaven and Earth Design stitches, individual stitches, I've done. Daffodils, one design, contains 272,250 stitches. So for one big finish, I've had seven. And I know that's not important to some people, and I know some of you absolutely adore stitching huge designs, and I say, you know, good for you, because I just can't do it. I will say at this point, I'm the type of person that of an evening will say, oh, no, 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 I can't sit and watch a film. That's too long. I can't be doing with that. But then I will sit and watch, you know, a few episodes of a TV series in a row, which actually takes up the same amount of time as the film would have done. And in a similar way, I'm kind of like that with cross-stitch projects now, with stitching projects. I'd rather, you know, in the length of time it's going to take me to stitch that daffodils piece, I could have had so many other finishes that I love probably more than daffodils. It was a case of, do I want to spend the next four or five years stitching 270,000 tent stitches in DMC? Or would I rather stitch and finish several pieces using all sorts of different fibres and threads and using different speciality stitches and stitching techniques and just buy print of the artwork? And at the end of the day, I think that's what I'm going to do with some of the sort of heaven left designs that I've got in my stash. I'll just buy a print of the artwork. I'm not saying I'll never stitch a heaven left design again, because I will. But it'll only be minis and QSs. You know, BAPs. Heaven left designs, BAPs. Not for me, really. I kind of feel that Daffodils was hogging a place in my rotation. It was taking time away from other stitching that I could do. So... <clears throat> When I came to that realisation, I thought, no, I think it's time to say goodbye to daffodils. So you won't be seeing that one in my um, rotation anymore. So it's the first time that I've actually done that with a piece where I've just sort of thought, no, it's not for me. Um, but I feel okay about it. So if any, any of you have got projects that you feel a bit similarly about, you're like, oh, I'm not really sure. Like I say, read that article um, that I'll link to below by Mary Cor Corbett. I just found it, you know, quite helpful to come to that realisation. So, after stitching this one, I was kind of a bit stitched out. I didn't feel like stitching. So I still had a week left in October. So instead of stitching, I decided that I would do a bit of finishing for a change because I know I've gone on enough before about how I'm rubbish at, you know, getting finishes out of the box and actually doing something with them. So I thought I would have a go at doing that this month instead as something a bit different to do because like I say stitching 35,000 stitches in two weeks on mini watching um, was a bit much so I didn't really feel like stitching. So now I'm going to show you some of the finishes that I had. Again these have all been on Instagram so if you follow me you've already seen them there isn't anything new here. Um, but I will say none of these finishes are perfect. I can find mistakes in all of them. Um, all the materials that I used were things, were bits and pieces that I already had in my stash. So although, yeah, maybe some of the fabric wasn't absolutely perfect for the particular design and I could have found something better, I quite like using up things from my stash. It gives me, you know, a little good angelic feeling that I'm using things that I've already got. So I'll just show you those. Um, maybe it might inspire you to... If you're as bad as I am at getting on and finishing things, maybe it might help you to think that you can do it as well. So one of the ways that I chose to finish some of my designs was I mounted it on canvas. Um, sometimes you have little small pieces, you don't really want to bother framing them. Um, it can be awkward sometimes to find the right size frame, for example. 
So what I did instead, there's um, a shop in the UK called The Works. Any of you UK stitchers will be familiar with it. It's basically a big um, discount bookstore, stationers, crafty bits and pieces. And it's quite amazing what you can find in there. I found some really good things for finishing, cheap things for finishing in there. Um, but what they sell is these sort of little um, mounted stretch canvases on with a little easel. So this, this canvas is what I use to mount my work. Um, also, another benefit for finishing your work this way rather than framing is that you can sort of embellish the design a bit more with the 3D things, whereas with a frame you'd have to worry about encasing it all under the glass. This way, you know, you don't have to worry. And if it's only like a little small, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world if it gets a bit of dust on it or whatever. So that's how I chose to finish three um, pieces of stitching that I had languishing in my drawer. Um, the details for the bits that I've finished, I mean I will tell you the designer and everything, but I don't think a lot of them aren't available anymore, they were like mystery stitch alongs or something, but I'll link everything below so that if you want to have a look at that particular designer's stuff, you can. So this mounted canvas, uh, this stretch canvas is what I used to finish, three pieces as I say. So I finished this one, this is um, by Donna at By The Bay Needle Arts, it was um, a mystery stitch along. I think it was last year, um, an autumn mystery stitch along. So all I did was just lace it to the canvas using some number 12 um, pearl thread. Um, then I stuck, well first of all I initially glued the felt to the back just to cover up the lacing but then I wasn't happy with the finish so what I did instead is I whip stitched it all the way around, um, whip stitched it to the linen so that it gave sort of a neater, neater finish. And then all I did was just glue some ribbon around the edges to hide up, you know, to cover up the folds. And I just ruched a bit of, I had a bit of ribbon left over, so I just ruched it and stuck that on the top. So that's all it is, really simple. And, you know, these little mounted canvases are only one ninety nine. Mounting things on canvas, actually, is quite a good um, option if you don't want to, you can do it with bigger pieces, all size of pieces. Um, where I live is quite an arty part of the country, so I can find um, stretch canvases like that in all sorts of different sizes. So I'm sure going through my finishes, I'll be able to possibly, instead of framing some pieces, be able to get just buy bigger pieces of canvas and stretch them on that instead. So that's that one. Uh, the next one, again by the same designer, again it was another mystery stitch along that she did for the summer this time. And that's that one. And again, just did exactly the same thing, put the uh, felt on the back, whip stitched it around and then just um, put the ribbon around the edge so it just, you know, finishes it off a bit. I don't know if I've actually shown you these two pieces before. Possibly not. But yeah, I think this one is just stitched with um, DMC. Um, but I think the pink flowers, by the look of it, are gentle art sampler threads and that's what I used. And the little sheep are actually all made up of French knots. And this one, um, again, I think it's just um, anchor, but I used um, Gentle Art Sample Thread, a limited edition s'mores for the tree. So you can see it's slightly variegated. And this orange um, is Anna Gabriel um, thread. It's a really lovely autumnal colour, so that's why I use that one. And the last stretched bit over a canvas I did is this piece of black work which is stitched on red Belfast and um, in black HDF silk and again same thing just laced it on the canvas and um, stuck some rickrack along the sides and these here are just resin roses, resin black roses um, yeah but it's just a nice quick easy way to display pieces of your stitching that you're not too, you know, it gets them out basically, rather than waiting for the perfect frame. Um, I just found that this was, you know, a quick and easy way to finish things and they look alright I think, you know, like I say I can point out a ton of mistakes in them and as I did each one, you know, each one was a bit better than the last and that's the thing with finishing, if you're not used to doing it a lot, it's one of those things that it does take practice and I know with the things that I've done each time um, I've done the same type of finishing, like for example a cushion, 
you know, I've learned things which then I carry on to the next piece. So it's all about the more you do it, the better you get. It's like stitching, really, it's the same thing. So those were those three bits of stitching mounted onto canvas. I also made a little autumnal ornament, which is this one. This little square of stitching, um, it was a mystery stitch along on a September stitch along last year, it might have been, on Lasting Allure's blog, Shannon, whose last name I can't say. It's probably not up there anymore, but I'll link to her blog anyway, just, you know, if you want something interesting to look at. So that's that one. Um, I stitched, I did stitch up this back piece to go with it, um, because I knew I wanted to make it into a little ornament. Um, the floss used in that one is three shades of Petite Treasure Braid. Again, the same orange Anna Gabriel floss, and a number 12 pearl is the gold colour there. And the green is a Carrie's Creations cotton in Olivetti, I think. So, I just put it together like you would a Biscorni, exactly the same way, except obviously I put the corners together rather than putting them um, in the middle, as you would when you finish up a Biscorni. So I just stitched a back stitch border around the finished piece of stitching, and the same with the back piece, and then whip stitched it through exactly like you do on a biscornu. And then I made the twisted cord and the tassel out of the same um, number five pearl thread. So I made those as well to go with it. I just picked a complementary colour I had in my stash and did that. And then obviously, as I stitched around, I just stuffed it with a little bit of stuffing just to give it a bit of um, plumpness, if that's even a word. So that's that one. The next thing I finished was a little needle case. Um, I didn't really have the right weight of wadding for this one. I should have, I need to get some cotton wadding. This was polyester wadding and it was a bit thick really. I knew that when I did it, but like I say, I just wanted to use what I had in my stash and get it, you know, not get it done, but just not, not um, use the fact that I didn't have the right wadding as an excuse for not doing it, which is what ordinarily I would have done. So I took my little um, toadstool um, autumn chatelaine freebie that I've had finished for forever and it's stitched on, I know I've said before, but it's stitched on a pole stitches hand dyed fabric. And what I did was I turned it into a little needle case. Again, the needle case isn't perfect, but you know, I stitched it. So it's got red, red on the back and in the middle uh, it's got um, this sort of polka dot green fabric. And then in the middle, in the middle, is some felt, which is where you put your needles. So that's that one. And I, again, I made um, the twisted cord out of some hmm, number twelve, random number twelve pearl, multicolour pearl I found in my stash. So although it's not perfect, I'm quite sort of, I'm okay with that. I'm just glad that I actually got on and did it because it's been all of these finishes I've done. I've had in my mind for ages, I've just not got on and, and done it, so getting on and doing it was a feat in itself. So that's that one, a little needle case. Um, then the last two things are cushions, just of different sizes. So I've had these little um, these little um, stitched lavender and bees in my finished pile. Oh, crumbs, I don't know, three, four years? They're taken from an issue of Cross Stitcher. I found out which one, I've forgotten what it is now, but again, I'll link to it below. So, um, these are just tiny little lavender pillows. They're filled with lavender seeds, and I just stitched them up as a little cushion with the lace trim and the coordinating fabrics on the back. And I stitched another one up exactly the same, but just swapped the fabrics around. They're both filled with lavender. Um, and they just, actually, they make good little presents, so I think I might give them away, so. They, those are the little stitch pieces there, so that's those. And the last finish I had again was a finish stitched piece that I've had in my in my finished pile for I don't know two three years maybe. Um, and I finally finished it up into a cushion. Now I knew that's what I was going to do with it when I did it, and I've had the material to finish it into a cushion in my stash for ages. But it's just getting on and getting it done, which seems to be the problem. But now I've done it, so I've got over the hump. So I made, um, this is um, Forgive Quickly, Kiss Slowly. It's by Lizzie Kate. And it's just stitched on, I don't know, 32 count linen. 
mm, flax possibly, cream, I don't know, something like that. And the stitching is just red anchor, a red anchor, that's all, nothing fancy for this one. So I just finished it into um, an envelope cushion, um, but I just absolutely adore the fabric that I used to make the cushion. I'm terrible for hoarding fabric um, for a special occasion. I've got some really nice fabrics and I just think, oh, I want to do something really special with them. But actually, I'm really glad I used this fabric for this cushion because it's, you know, something that I'll see every day. You know, it's in my bedroom, so... You know, it's just nice to get things out of the drawers, really, and onto something that you've made. So, yeah, I just made an envelope cushion out of all the different bits of fabric. And then I made these little yo-yos to embellish it because it's a bit plain on the front. The buttons are all different, but that actually doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would have done. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that one, and I'm glad. I love this fabric. I think it's... um. French General by Moda, but I don't know what collection it is, but I absolutely adore their fabric. I'm always looking on eBay for, for their fabric. You know, fat quarters, I'm a bit obsessed. So, there you go. That's what I have been up to stitching-wise this month. Um, November, as far as November is concerned, I was going to have... I was thinking about having a new start because I got a new chart in the post, a new Just Nan chart. But I've decided that I think actually what I'll do is concentrate on finishing Twisted Rainbow to make sure I know that I've got it done by the end of the year because I don't want to have anything to carry on, carry over to January. I want to have a clean, fresh start in January, which is kind of odd because for me this time of year, November, December, is actually the time when I pick a really uh, a project that I can really get my teeth into. So quite often this time of year is when I've started Heaven and Earth Designs or Chatelaines or... Um, I think one year this time, oh it was this time of year that I started uh, Celtic Spring, just something that you can sort of really get your teeth into. So that's a bit weird not to have something like that to start. Um, so uh, I might do some more finishing, I've got plenty of finishes to sort out and make into things. And I'll probably stitch out a few little bits and pieces but from now until the end of the year probably not much of any interest going on in my stitching so consequently I don't know when my next video will be it might not be till January I don't know we'll see how things go if I've got anything to show or not hopefully I'll well I will finish Twisted Rainbow so that's the video I guess so that's my stitching for the month I will try and be a bit more present on Flosstube a bit more active but I can't make any promises so I th oh, no, I, I do have one more thing to say. It's behind me. I finally got all my thread organisation storage sorted. So those are my new, um, behind me are my new um, storage towers for my crafty things. So it's mainly threads and fabric. Um, I know you probably can't see them very well. So um, I put up a picture now of what they look like so you can see them. Um, all the little drawers, for the most part, hold a thread, and the bigger drawers hold my finished pieces, and my plain fabrics, my hand dyed fabrics, my quilting finishing fabrics, and trims and all that type of thing. So it's all in there now, all in one place, and it's absolutely fabulous. I can fit about um, 60 floss away bags in one of those little, in the smallest of the drawers. So that's really good. Um, so it holds all my current thread, but there's also um, some room there for some extra thread that might somehow find its way to me through my letter, through my post box. Um, so that I also spent, as well as a week spent finishing these bits and pieces. I spent the weekend sorting through um, my stash and transferring it all to its new little home. So that was fun. Um, I got those storage towers, quite a few people have asked me where I got them from. They're custom designed ones in the sense that I had the drawers in the order that I wanted and the colours that I wanted um, because I wanted smaller draw a combination of smaller drawers and bigger drawers. But I got them from the really useful product company. The really, they're known as really useful boxes, you've all seen them. I don't think it matters where you live in the world, you would have seen them. Um, but again, I'll put a link below. Um, 
so that you know you can have a look if you want. Yep, so now I think I have definitely told you everything that's happened stitching wise this month. So I shall leave it there and say thank you for watching and happy stitching.